Howdy Wargamers, I'm Jay and our studio recently received this awesome clanky behemoth from Cromleg. Now I'm going to show you how I painted him up. Let's get it painted. Now right from the word go, I knew I wanted this guy to look like he's been through the wars. So I wanted him as rusty and as beaten up as I could possibly get away with, without taking away from the bright flash kits colour scheme I wanted to apply to this guy. So I started with an undercoat of Army Painter's Fur Brown Colour Primers. I then applied Citadel's Troll Slayer Orange using a sponge to get a speckled effect. Following this, I covered the whole miniature using hairspray. Any hairspray will do, but if you're going to use your partner's hairspray, it's worth asking first, because apparently, some brands of this stuff can be very expensive, and it's not worth getting in trouble over. Once you've covered the whole miniature in hairspray, while it's still wet, you want to sprinkle table salt over it. The more salt you apply, the more rust you'll get on your model, so this part is entirely down to your personal preference. Ok, so now I begin by painting the miniature the colour scheme I want to follow. Obviously, since I'm doing flash kits, I want to use yellow. But there is no reason why you couldn't apply red, blue, black or whatever colour scheme you want at this stage. Although it's not essential, having an airbrush at this point is really going to help you out, because you only want a thin layer of paint over the salt, because later on we'll be washing the whole model with water to make the salt dis dissolve. If you don't have an airbrush, it's not too much of an issue, just make sure you water your paints down sufficiently and it will be fine. Get this vibrant yellow, I use Citadel's Real Yellow watered down using Vallejo's Airbrush Thinner. I watered it down to a similar consistency to milk, which ended up being about two parts thinner to one part paint. Any other areas that need painting in a different colour should also be done at this stage. Here, I'm painting a few different areas using Sotec Green to break up the model a bit. Okay, so now it's time for the fun bit. Here I'm applying warm water to the miniature. This should dissolve the salt, leaving loads of tiny little specks of orange brown. This is a really easy way of getting a realistic rusted look. At this stage, you really want to use a soft brush, since the thin layer of paint is super easy to scratch, and that's not what you want, yet. Ok, so now you want to get yourself a really stiff brush. A stippling brush is the best choice here. Now go around the miniature, jabbing at it with the brush. The more paint you scrape off, the more worn the walker will look. Try not to go too crazy, you still want to be able to recognise the colour scheme after you have finished. He's looking pretty beaten up at this point, but not nearly enough. We need to try and make this guy look a little bit more metallic, since he's made out of scrap metal. We can do this by using the sponge again. Apply black paint to the sponge and get rid of any excess paint. A lot like dry brushing. 
Now go around the miniature, dabbing at, the, at it with the sponge. Try and focus your attention to the sharp edges and corners of the model. At this point, I'm going to start painting various areas in solid black. This is to add a nice contrast and some visual interest. Here I'm using yet more black. This is going to be the main colour for the weapons, so cover the whole weapon in black, ready to be made metallic later. After I finish base coating the weapons, I lightly spray the whole model with black. Hold the airbrush a fair distance away when doing this, it's only to try and make the model look more dirty and to tie the colours in together a bit. You don't want large spots of black paint, just a light dusting. And again, if you don't have an airbrush, you can still do this stage, just lightly dry brush on some black. Once you are happy with how dirty he looks, you'll want to get that scrap piece of sponge out again, only this time using a silver metallic. I used Vallejo's Model Air Aluminium. The only difference between this step and the step before is the quantity of paint. Use less silver as you did with the black, as you want a fair amount of the black to show through. At this point you will want to apply some of the silver to the weapons. Use a mixture of dabbing and scraping when applying the paint. This will help make the weapons look more scratched and worn. I decided at this point that the model was just a little bit too much yellow. So I decided to break the model up a bit more by painting the behemoth's jaw white. With the intention of making it checkered later, I started with a base of Citadel's Ceramite White. This white gives a good coverage, and don't worry too much about the paint being too thick. You can imagine that the orcs had a similar line of thought to myself. There's too much yellow here, paint is mouth a different colour. At which point, they would just slap on some white paint. This is about as easy as it gets where freehand is concerned. Just paint on a load of black boxes to make a checkered pattern. Again, don't be too worried about being precise. I can't imagine there being any Picassos amongst the orcs. Here you can see the finished designs. As you can see, I decided to vary the pattern a bit on the side of the jaw. This was just to spice things up a bit. Now to tie the jaw into the rest of the model, I redid the previous steps by applying the black paint with the sponge again, as well as the metallic. Painting the eye was fairly simple. Just keep a steady hand and use a different colour to the ones you've already used. I chose red. Citadel to Mephistone red to be exact. Now paint any areas you want to be bare metal. I use Citadel's Iron Breaker.
To draw in some more attention, I decided the rockets on his arms should be a different colour, so I painted one of them blue and the other one red. The red one will obviously be a little bit faster than the blue one. Now the bare metal areas should get a wash of Army Painter's Strong Tone ink, just so they look as dirty as the rest of the model. Ok guys and girls, here he is in all his glory. I have to say I had a lot of fun painting this guy. Cromlech put a lot of effort into this kit and I can't recommend it highly enough. It was an absolute dream to put together, with next to no clean up whatsoever, and I think he would look awesome in a squad of killer cans, or as an alternative to the Games Workshop Death Dread. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and ultimately learned something new. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website at www.ttcombat.com where you'll find more tutorials and loads of other tabletop fun. Thanks for watching guys.